the previous class we learnt about some of the basics of the regression analysis. Then I introduced you to some of the empirical criteria which were applicable in case of rocks and rock masses. Today we will learn about the most commonly adopted empirical failure criterion in case of rocks and rock masses which is known as Hook and Brown criterion. This was given in 1980 by these two authors Hook and Brown. The failure within the soil mass it occurs in shear we all know this. And therefore, it is common to present the failure criterion in terms of shear and the normal stresses on the failure plane. But in case of rock mechanics, it is the common practice to represent the failure criterion in terms of principal stresses which are sigma 1 and sigma 3. It is the convention to represent the major principal stress by sigma 1 and minor principal stress by sigma 3. So, therefore, for most of the failure criterion in case of rock mechanics, it is a functional relationship between sigma 1 and sigma 3. This Hook and Brown criterion is valid for intact rock as well as the jointed rocks. And that is one of the reason that it is quite widely used in rock mechanics. So, for the intact rock, we have seen that there were deficiencies of more Coulomb criterion when this was applied in case of the rocks. What were these deficiency? If you recall our discussion with respect to this more Coulomb criterion, we discussed that in case of the rock mass where the discontinuities are also present, it is not really possible to get the parameters of more Coulomb failure criterion in terms of effective stresses. And therefore, we just left there with a big question that how to determine these parameters. So, in view of those deficiencies, this criterion which was given by Hook and Brown, it takes care of some of those deficiencies. So, let us see first that how the Hook and Brown criterion is applicable in case of the intact rock. And then we will see that how it can it has been extended to the rock mass. And then we will see how the parameters of Hook and Brown criterion can be used to determine the parameters of more Coulomb failure criterion. So, this Hook and Brown criterion in terms of effective major and minor principal stresses on an intact rock at the failure which is sigma 1 f prime and sigma 3 f prime respectively. It can be related by this expression which is sigma 1 f prime is equal to sigma 3 f prime plus sigma c i into m i sigma 3 f prime divided by sigma c i plus s to the power 0 0.5. So, this is the equation for Hook and Brown criterion where this sigma c i is the UCS of the intact rock material m and s these are the constants that depend on the properties of rock and also on the extent to which it had been broken before being subjected to failure stresses which are sigma 1 f 
and sigma 3f. Now in case of this equation if we substitute this sigma 3f equal to 0 that means confining pressure is equal to 0. So what we are going to get as an axial stress as it will be the UCS of the intact rock that is what that we are going to get. So just substitute these values in the expression and what you are going to get is uh, see I just do it sigma ci that is equal to first term will become equal to 0 plus sigma ci and then inside the bracket first term will become equal to 0 plus s to the power 0 0.25 and what this equation gives me is that for this equation to be satisfied this s should be equal to 1 and therefore we can conclude that for intact rocks this parameter of hook and brown criterion which is s that will be equal to 1. Now if we just substitute this s is equal to 1 in uh, now if we just substitute this s is equal to 1 in the hook and brown criterion equation. So that equation can be written as sigma 1 f prime minus sigma 3 f prime whole square this is equal to m sigma c i sigma 3 f prime plus sigma c i square this is for the intact rock with s is equal to 1. Now we have seen that how the equation for the intact rock looks like. So if we plot the triaxial data as sigma 1f minus sigma 3f whole square versus sigma 3f we can plot a straight line between these two and from there we can obtain mi and sigma ci. So the parameters were s, m and sigma ci. So this is the way we can find out mi and sigma ci and you have seen that s is going to be equal to 1 in case of the intact rock. Now if it is not possible to get this uh, mi from this triaxial uh, test data then we can uh, find out from this table that is depending upon the various rock types here the value of m has been given we have discussed this table earlier as well say in case of the marble it is 10.6 and in case of norite it is 23.2 as the quality of the rock gets better it corresponds to the larger value of m you can see here that granite has large value of m as 27.9 so basically this mi is a petrographic constant which is analogous to the friction angle and the strength increases with increasing values of mi. For the intact rock the variation of sigma 1f against sigma 3f as per hook and brown criterion and more coulomb criterion has been shown here. So the first plot which is a this corresponds to hook and brown criterion and b corresponds to more coulomb criterion you have seen in case of the more coulomb criterion this relationship was a straight line where the intercept on sigma 1 axis was giving us the idea about the ucs 
and the intercept on x axis is giving us the idea about the tensile strength. But in case of the Hook and Brown criterion, this is how the variation is going to be. So, in this case, it is not a straight line as you all can see. So, this is kind of a parabolic variation. where this point corresponds to the uniaxial compression because here sigma 3 is equal to 0. So, whatever is the value of sigma 1 that is going to give you the UCS which is sigma C and this point corresponds to the results for the uniaxial tension. So, this sigma T is going to give us the tensile strength under uniaxial tension. So, if you compare these two criterion, this is straight line, it is the parabolic variation. Why it is more commonly adopted in case of rocks? Because most of the time when you conduct the test on the rock, when you conduct the triaxial test on the rock, this is the kind of variation that you will get and not the straight line. So, as I mentioned, it is variation of sigma 1 f against sigma 3 f as per Hook and Brown criterion is the parabolic failure envelope. In case of the more Coulomb criterion, it was a straight line and the intercept on sigma 1 axis and the sigma 3 axis gave us respectively UCS of the intact rock and uniaxial tensile strength of the intact rock. Now, we just substitute this sigma 3 f is equal to sigma T i with its appropriate sign. So, we have substituting sigma 3 f prime is equal to minus sigma T i and when this is going to be there, when you will have sigma 1 f prime which is equal to 0. In Hook and Brown criterion equation. So, what we are going to get is take a look 0 equal to minus sigma T i plus sigma C i into M i minus sigma T i divided by sigma C i plus s to the power 0 0.5 and this can also be written as sigma T i divided by sigma C i whole square is going to be equal to minus m i sigma T i upon sigma C i plus s or if we try to get this ratio, we can write it as minus m i plus minus square root of m i square plus 4 s divided by 2. So, from here we can see that this ratio which is the ratio of compressive to tensile strength 
of an intact rock this depends upon only mi as s is equal to 1 for intact rock right so you see that for the intact rock this quantity is going to be equal to 1 and therefore this ratio will be only the function of m now this ratio sigma ci upon sigma ti increases with increase in m i and if we take a range of m i so from 5 to 35 so for the range of m i from 5 to 35 this sigma c i upon sigma t i lies within 5 to 35 you can just check it with the help of the calculator just substitute the value of m between any value between 5 and 35 and you will get that this will be approximately equal to the value of m i which you have taken so we can say that approximately this sigma c i upon sigma t i is equal to m i that can be seen now this was all about the intact rock i mentioned to you that this criterion can be extended or applicable in case of the rock mass let us see how this is done so over a period of many years this hook and brown failure criterion has been evolved as more generalized hook and brown failure criterion and is also applicable in case of the rock mass along with the intact rocks so for the jointed rock mass this is how the expression is written for the hook and brown failure criterion which is sigma 1 f prime is equal to sigma 3 f prime plus sigma c i m m sigma 3 f prime divided by sigma c i plus s to the power a now here these this parameter m m is nothing but the m parameter which we had in case of the intact rock as well for the rock mass and because it is for rock mass therefore this subscript has been added here and this can be derived from mi which is for intact rock how see mm is written as mi exponential of gsi minus 100 divided by 28 minus 14 d you remember this gsi we discussed when uh, uh, we were uh, discussing the ch uh, chapter on the uh, classification of the rock mass this is uh, what is uh, your uh, and geological strength index and this d factor is a factor which accounts for the disturbance in the rock mass so this d is the factor accounts for 
the disturbance in rock mass due to blasting and the stress relief i will tell you little later that how this parameter is determined for the time being just keep in mind that this d varies in the range of 0 to 1 0 stands for the undisturbed rock mass while this one is for highly disturbed rock mass so basically this undisturbed rock mass means there is no disturbance because of this Uh, blasting or there is no stress relief because of the excavation phenomena so this is like kind of undisturbed situation but then in this case uh, you have seen that we still use sigma ci for intact rock even for the rock mass h hook and brown criterion so although it is for uh, the rock mass but the term sigma ci which is there for the intact rock comes into picture now this constant mm which is for the rock mass it can take the positive value in the range of 0.001 to 25 highly disturb poor quality rock masses they will fall towards the lower range and hard and almost intact rock will be at the upper end intuitively we can say that because of the fact that rock mass they are weaker than the intact rock because of the presence of the discontinuity intuitively mm will be less than mi typically this mi is going to be in the range of 2 to 35 this difference between parameter m for the rock mass and for the intact rock which is mm minus mi is larger with the poorer quality rock mass which has low value of G, gsi that is geological strength index due to the presence of the discontinuities ucs of the rock mass which is represented by sigma cm will be less than the ucs of the intact rock which is represented by sigma ci these constant s and a for the rock mass can typically be determined by these expressions which are given as s is equal to exponential of gsi minus 100 divided by 9 minus 3d d is again the same disturbance factor and a is equal to half plus 1 by 6 e to the power minus gsi upon 15 minus e to the power minus 20 upon 3 so this is how the constants for uh the rock mass which are s and a these can be determined and we have already seen how the parameter m for the rock mass can be determined 
So, this generally this S for the rock mass it varies in the range of 0 to 1 and as explained earlier mostly in the lower end of the range with 0 corresponds to the poor quality rock and 1 for the intact rock. The petrographic constant which is S only is very much similar to the cohesion in Mohr Coulomb failure criterion. The constant A is 0 0.5 for the good quality rock or the intact rock and it takes a value of 0 0.65 for poor quality of rock. As mentioned D is a factor to account for the disturbance within the rock mass due to blasting, stress relief and other such phenomena and it varies in the range of 0 to 1, 0 for the undisturbed rock mass and 1 for the highly disturbed rock mass. In case of the Hook and Brown criterion, the assumption with its development was that the intact rock and the rock mass, they are going to behave in an isotropic manner. So, this criterion has been found to work well in case of the intact rock specimen and the closely spaced heavily jointed rock masses where you can assume the isotropy. But where you have the situations that the structure that you want to analyze and the block sizes which are there in the rock mass if they are of the same order in size or if you have the situations with weak discontinuities then in that case this criterion should not be applied. So, once again please keep in mind as long as the material or the rock mass or the intact rock can be assumed as an isotropic material Hook and Brown criteria works well in such cases but in these cases it is not applied. Therefore, for the rock mass uh, the criteria as sigma 1 f prime is equal to sigma 3 f prime plus sigma c i and we have m m sigma 3 f prime divided by sigma c i plus s to the power a. Now, you just substitute sigma 3 prime equal to 0. So, what we are going to get is sigma 1 f prime will be sigma c m which is u c s of the rock mass. So, just substitute it here and see what you get. So, this is what is going to be sigma c m. This term will become equal to 0 and this term will also become equal to 0. So, ultimately you are going to get sigma c i s to the power a and we know this sigma c i is u c s of the intact Now, how to get uh, the sigma cm from the other way? So, Marinos and Hook in 2001 gave empirical relationship for the UCS of rock mass and that is given as sigma cm is equal to sigma ci multiplied by 0 0.0034 m i to the power 0 0.8 this whole thing multiplied by 1.029 
प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव ई टू दी पावर माइनस जीरो पॉइंट वन एम आई एंड दिस होल थिंग टू दी पावर जी एस आई सो फॉर सिग्मा सी एम अपॉन सिग्मा सी आई टेंडिंग टू वन what does that mean that the ucs of the intact rock and ucs of the rock mass they are equal to each other this would correspond to the situation when this gsi increases to 100 so you just see that substitute this here as 100 and then you will be getting that this ratio will be approximately equal to 1 or it will be tending to 1 then assuming a is equal to 0.5 uh, let us try to find out the equation for the ratio of tensile to compressive strength uh, of the rock mass so first let us try to see what was that equation for the intact rock so this was uh, sigma ti divided by sigma ci was equal to minus square root of mi square plus 4s minus mi divided by 2 this was for the intact rock and obviously this s would be equal to 1 for the intact rock but right now i am not substituting it equal to 1 because i want to extend this expression in case of the rock mass so that's how what we are going to get as a uniaxial tensile strength of the rock mass that i would represent as sigma tm that would be minus sigma ci okay and that's going to be a uh, square root of m m square plus 4s minus m m divided by 2 okay uh, so just take a note of it here that this negative sign uh, would be here so this is how that we are going to get the uniaxial tensile strength of the rock mass for the brittle materials uh, the uniaxial tensile strength is going to be equal to the biaxial tensile strength and therefore just substitute sigma 3f prime equal to sigma 1f prime is equal to sigma tm in this equation which was sigma 1f prime equal to sigma 3f prime plus sigma ci into mm sigma 3f prime upon sigma ci plus s to the power a just substitute it in this what we get is a uh, sigma tm is equal to sigma tm because sigma 3f sigma 1f and sigma tm they are equal to each other plus sigma ci and mm sigma tm divided by sigma ci plus s to the power a this will get cancel out so what you are going to get from here is a uh, m m sigma t m to the uh, m m sigma t m upon sigma c i plus s would be equal to 0 and therefore we will get sigma tm equal to minus s 
sigma c i upon m m. So, this is how in such situation for brittle materials only, this is for brittle materials. You can get the tensile strength of the rock mass in such manner. So, today we discussed about the Hook and Brown criteria which is uh, one of the empirical criteria uh, most commonly adopted in case of rock and rock masses. We saw the different aspects related to this uh, criterion. So, in the next class we will learn that how the parameters of Hook and Brown criterion can be useful in order to get the more Coulomb failure criterion parameters under effective stress condition. Thank you very much.